Hi everybody, Bentley Compost Guy Christy here again. And in this video, I want to show you how I make my uh, super optimized food waste mix. Now, this is a mix that I talked about in my last Worm In update. And I uh, saw a question on the blog post from John, our good friend, a uh, Red Room Composting regular about how exactly I was sort of putting together this mix and that's a really excellent question and it's not something I've talked about all that much I talk about optimizing your foods for maximum uh, efficiency of the vermicomposting process but I've never really uh, had a video that kind of features how you can optimize your food materials okay so this mix that I'm going to be making today you know there's no set formula for making an optimized food mix other than some of the key components that you want to include. So what you want to ideally include in an optimized food mix, and this is in a food mix that is going to actually include food waste, you don't necessarily have to have food waste, but if you are using food waste, which most people probably are, then the best way to optimize it, um, apart from actually the, the physical optimization, which we'll show in a minute, uh, what you want to do is ideally have what I refer to as a living material and also a somewhat some you know small amount of a bedding material and then just your 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 chopped up food waste essentially. So just gonna show you how I'm gonna do it today. Ideally, and what I normally do is I put my food wastes in just basic bags like this, you know, probably you probably expect me to have some kind of fancy uh, food waste container, but we have these bags that are basically going to end up as garbage anyway, and I like to put them through one more use before they get tossed, and so all I do is literally keep a bag like this. It does have a little holder that I use, but I keep these down below my sink and in the kitchen and just put the food scraps in there. It's compostable food scraps. It's almost always going to be fruits and vegetable scraps. And once in a while a, a coffee filter bag, uh, just a coffee filter with, with used grounds in it. And that's pretty much it. I, I don't use a lot of uh, starchy stuff. A lot of starchy stuff doesn't go into my vermicomposting, but you know, in outdoor systems, and we don't really throw away a lot of, of starchy stuff. But, uh, you know, something like rice might end up in there, pasta once in a while. But generally speaking, it's mostly going to be the fruits and vegetables. So I'm just going to dump this out. Now, one thing I should mention right off the bat, once I've filled a bag like this, it goes into my deep freezer. If it's the middle of winter, I might throw it outside, just as long as it, it can go someplace where it's going to freeze solid. And that is basically the start of the breakdown process, because if you freeze something that's water rich, it's going to burst all those cells, and that's going to be a good physical breakdown just right off the bat. Unfortunately, I didn't, you know, because I wanted to shoot this video so quickly, I didn't have any thought out uh, materials that have been frozen. So we're working with essentially, I wouldn't say fresh, but uh, materials that has not that have not been really frozen. Okay, so just kind of bear with me and assume that these materials have already been frozen. And this is kind of gross, but you can see at the bottom that the, the aging process has at least started, and that's a good thing too. If the, the, if the uh, materials have been sort of aging, kind of decomposing a bit, as long as it's not stinking up your house, um, that, that's not a bad thing. One thing I do suggest for newcomers, if you're brand new to all this, I'm, I've done this so many times I, I don't need to worry, but if you're brand new, you might want to put a bit of bedding in the bottom of one of these bags. Otherwise, I mean, that's I can smell it just dumping it out, but uh, even a bit of paper towel or whatever, something down in the bottom that's going to to soak up that liquid, that leachate that's going to come from decomposing uh, organic matter, okay? So just, just one possibility. You can see it's chopped up, you know, a fair amount of, of chopping that's happened, but uh, still fairly intact pieces of banana peel and whatnot. So and you can see that this is a pretty hefty amount of food, and this is I just recently added a huge feeding to my uh, worm in mega, so we're going to be pushing the limits in terms of volume and maybe weight, hopefully not weight, but 
Anyway, so you can see that's a lot, that's a lot of uh, food waste just on its own, okay? So, you know, it's obviously, I'm doing this one hand routine here, which doesn't lend itself well to uh, getting stuff done, but I'm just gonna snip this. You, you obviously don't want the plastic, elastics, and anything like that that's gonna end up in their tags. But uh, now this is a great way to deal with the old produce in your fridge that never got used and uh, you know get it get it nicely ready for your worms. Okay, so we got it like that. If I had just added this to my worm bin, you know, this is a big part of why you should be freezing. I don't know what's gonna happen with these carrots, but you know, something like that and maybe a little broccoli thing, especially anything that's meant to be in the ground. That carrot, I wouldn't be surprised if I see that growing in the system. So that's one real nice advantage of actually uh, killing stuff off with, with, a, with a deep freeze. And another thing is during the warmer months when there are potential for fruit flies, that's, uh, you wanna be able to kill the eggs. It, bananas are a real culprit and any, any fruit, especially a tropical fruit, they can be in the peel, okay? So it's a really, really good idea to, to toss that in the, uh, in the freezer if at all possible. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna start snipping. It's nothing fancy. I don't have any fancy tool. My ultimate uh, dream would be to have some kind of crazy huge blender that I could toss all this into. And I'm sure, I mean, maybe there's chippers, I don't know, different machines that you might be able to uh, use to shred up all your food waste. But for me, it's just kind of a low tech, basic approach. I just want to get the particle size as small as I can. And I'm just going to turn this video off for a minute and I'll be back once this is all ready to go, okay? Okay, I am back with my food waste. As you can see, I have chopped it up a fair bit. Now, I should mention it's not going to be perfect. Uh, ideally, like I said, you will have frozen the materials first and then let them thaw and it would be pretty soft and you might even be able to do a fair amount with a, a little hand trowel or something like that. But anyway, I'm not overly concerned. I'm actually glad in this case that this material hasn't been frozen just because, like I said, I just added, I don't know, what was it, something like 22 pounds of food material to the Worm and Mega uh, the other day. And this stuff is going to be more of a slow release, just because it needs to decompose first before it, uh, you know, starts to really, really get munched by the worms. Um, whereas the other stuff, because it's frozen already and thawed, I mean, they, they are right into that material uh, already, and they seem to be loving it. So anyway, so we got this mix. So this is sort of step one of uh, optimizing your material. Um, I said you need bedding. There's already some paper towel in there. This isn't really, there's no sort of uh, science involved here. If, if you're not going to use living material, uh, you don't, or you don't have a lot of living material, you, you probably want to err more on the side of bedding. But because I have a lot of really nice living material, uh, I'm not really, I'm just kind of showing it more for the fact of uh, showing you what I mean. Just some, just some shredded cardboard, shredded brown paper. You know, I, I try to stay away from too much white paper, but it's not really a big deal. A little bit uh, mixed in. Uh, if you're starting up a brand new system with uh, only white office paper, that's usually uh, gonna potentially cause some trouble anyway, just because of the chemicals in the paper. But adding adding a bit to your uh, feeding is not a big deal, okay? Just because they have their established habitat. Okay, so some bedding. Again, if you add more bedding, um, if you don't have all that much uh, living material. Now, as far as living material goes, I think something that a lot of people will probably be kind of familiar with and what they might have. This is 
vermicompost that's been screened. So this is the coarse fraction of screened vermicompost. I've been doing a lot of screening lately uh, from my Vermbin 48 system and I actually got a batch from the, the worm in Mega. And so what I like to do is screen it down to a quarter inch or eighth of an inch and then I'm left with all this stuff. And this actually has worms in it which is kind of cool. But uh, yeah, this is very coarse stuff. Very nice stuff, you know. If you threw this in your garden, it'd be a great, a great uh, compost for that matter. I mean, or mulch or something along those lines. It's not as fine and, and nice as the other stuff that was screened out, but it's it's really good stuff. But what I like to do with it, uh, especially during the winter, if I don't happen to have the aged horse manure, which is, as we'll talk about in a minute, is my favorite um, living material. This stuff, this stuff works great, and this is what I was working using this winter. So, you know, just kind of mix it in there. You don't need to uh, get overly fancy about it. And what this does, all that surface area of that food waste, it's all exposed to microbes now. And this stuff, living material, is absolutely loaded with microbes. Now, if you're wondering about what different kinds of living materials there are, you know, there, like I said, there's a coarse vermicompost, um, there's any sort of regular dark rich compost maybe from an outdoor bin you just want to be a little bit cautious if there's you know pest organisms or anything like that uh, but anything dark and earthy smelling decomposing uh, leaf litter or leaf mold as as some people call it that would be great just anything dark and rich and even even something that's doesn't necessarily have to be compost of any sort even something like uh, old thatch from your grass, something dead and dry. As long as it's not living, like anything that's green and living and it's got potential for, for uh, ammonia production, just because there's more nitrogen in those types of materials. It should be sort of a carbon rich type of material. But uh, you know, hopefully you get the idea. Now aged horse manure is, like I said, absolutely my favorite by far. And the worms, go crazy for it. I'm just going to do a one hand job here with uh, this horse manure that I have. And it, you're going to see right now what I mean. Now horse manure, I'm sure most of you are familiar with what the fresh stuff looks like. It's kind of like little little clods, little, little balls of, of manure. You can see this doesn't look like that. It's almost like compost. So it should be fairly earthy, not completely turned into vermicompost obviously although I mean I guess that would be fine but this stuff's really nice because it's sort of in between uh, those stages it still has food value has a huge amount of habitat value and that's a big part why, uh, why I'm not too worried about adding lots and lots of the uh, the bedding materials at the same time because this stuff is sort of like an all-in-one you can't go wrong with this you can't add too much of this stuff and you know if you're brand new to manure I would say use caution absolutely make sure it smells earthy doesn't smell like manure hopefully it doesn't look like manure you know in a case of an enclosed plastic bin that's where you need to be a little bit more careful if there's any hint of manure smell just stay away from it it's not worth not worth the risk so now really all I do is just mix it up you just want to make sure it's just well distributed everything is nice and mixed and that's really all there is to it. And then if you wanted to, and what I did with my last batch of this, which was, again, it was that frozen and then thawed food waste, I let it sit. I just let it sit overnight just to get that microbial process going. And like I said, when I put that in, normally uh, the worms give it a bit of time, especially when they got a lot of other food in the system. But they were like, right into it. And that's a good sign. If worms are right into whatever you're adding to your bin, then you know you are on the right track. All right, so that's basically it. Now, what I'm seeing, you know, it's sort of uh, my trained eye, I guess you could say. To, to me, this looks a little bit dry. If, if this is you and it looks like this, I wouldn't even worry about it. Just put it in your worm bin and I mean, that's fine. There's moisture in the food waste. But to me, I like to get it a little bit wetter. And this is, you know, best suited if you don't have a bin that drains at all. If it's not a flow-through system you're using, 
then you know you definitely want to be even more cautious and I would if it was a plastic band and I was putting this in a plastic band probably better just to kind of leave it as it is because as this decomposes it's going to release water but because I'm using my worm and mega I do want to kind of optimize the moisture levels a bit I don't want it pouring down the thing and really for that matter I don't want it dripping I just want it uh, nicely moistened and this that's the beauty of this aged horse manure. It's like a sponge. It can hold a lot of moisture without any draining away. And I mean I can get away, I could probably get away with adding that whole bottle. Now obviously this adds to the weight. So it's sort of, I mean, weighing food, weight, food materials for your rumor composting system is a bit misleading no matter what. Just because it's different things, food wastes are totally different than manures. But you know what, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm trying to keep track of that just for the sake of uh, showing people just the kind of capacity this Worm and Mega has. And you know, even the volume alone. And that's the beauty of a mix like this. Unlike a typical, just a big heap of food waste, you could get away with adding as much of this stuff as you wanted, essentially. You know, maybe, maybe not quite with, with this uh, material the way it is right now. I mean, you do want to have a bit of caution, but it helps a lot um, to have that living material in there, just because those microbes can filter out any uh, odor-causing molecules and just process, they start to decompose the material and, and contain it. Whereas you have this big heap of of uh, food waste, that's just, that's gonna stink and uh, potentially go anaerobic on you. And that's pretty much it. All right, so I hope you found this video interesting. It was a fairly long video, but uh, hopefully it was a bit of an educational process as far as optimizing your food waste goes. All right, thanks for tuning in. This is Bentley Compost Guy Christie, and I'm sure we'll be talking again soon.